Hi everyone, it's Erica and we're here today to talk a little bit about money, flow, and energetic alignment. So most of what the matrix kind of teaches people and tries to program people with about money is really, really all wrong. So it can be hard to kind of get out of that mindset and make the switch from lack mentality to abundance mentality. So I'm just gonna touch on some little examples of this and great ways to just ease yourself into this flow. So first of all, money, currency, think about a current. It's a flow, right? Money is meant to be a flowing energy exchange. You know what I'm saying? So anytime that you have a mentality of hoarding and not spending, um, you're really just leaving that area of your life stagnant. And the stagnancy is oftentimes what does not allow for the growth that you're wanting. So when you get into healing your money line, healing your limiting beliefs around money, most of it is not even necessarily about money itself as the paper. Um, this goes back to basically your feeling of freedom. It's not necessarily the money that you're after. You're after the feeling of freedom that comes with having the abundance. So when it comes to changing over from a lack mentality to an abundance mindset, there's some little practices that you can do as well as affirmations. Now, take it from me. I've been so unaligned, so unknowing, so in lack and poverty consciousness. I mean, I've been so broke that I've had to walk over to a neighbor's house and borrow a dollar and 25 cents so I could walk to the dollar store and get, and get one package of baby wipes and then the tax on that. I've been so broke that I've literally had to walk into grocery stores and just steal milk and bread. Like, I've been broke, homeless. I've been all of that stuff. And the mindset that always kept me down was... I have a hard life. I, you know, I, I'm, you know, I am a single mom. This is just all this stuff, right? And it wasn't up until about four years ago when I actually joined um, a company that I learned the importance of investing in yourself, believing in yourself. Um, and this is just such a, it was such a profound chain of events that really led me to a turnover because even after I got out of being like so destitutely poor, right, um, I was still just kind of mucking along, right? And once I got involved with more women, who were always speaking out loud about the importance of investing in yourself, caring for yourself. This was something I've never heard of. And moms, if you're a mom and you have this mom guilt, where does this even come from? Like, I just look back at some of the stuff I used to think, and I know a lot of moms are still dealing with this right now. It's like, as soon as we become a mom, we deserve nothing. We don't count anymore. We, we, we just get nothing. 
And I used to live with that belief for so long. I'd be like, oh, my kid needs diapers. I can't get myself this. Or I can't go and do this. I got to get my kid something. When in reality, there's room for everyone, you know? Um, when you have a lack mindset, you're going to have a shit ton of guilt, mom guilt, uh, any kind of guilt that says, oh my God, I got to keep my money in the bank and hoard it for an, an emergency or something. Like none of this promotes a healthy flow, right? Um, I took two money energetics courses. Actually, I've taken a several money energetics courses with a few different coaches, but I took a couple in particular with uh, the coach I work most closest with, Sarah. And I think this really just embedded this into my head that if you look at money as your best friend, as an energy, What's going to make money want to come to you? Is money going to want to just flow to you if you're only hoarding it or using it for bills or um, making it feel like it's scarce? Um, no, it's not. Money wants to have fun. Money wants to flow free and experience things in life. So some ways to start coaching yourself and start mentally challenging yourself and catching your beliefs. Basically, just look at how you think on even a little purchase. Like what's your first, what's your first um, instinct? when when you want to buy yourself something and it doesn't ha you don't have to start with like crazy stuff that's out of your price range as so you say like um because if you're living with your soul alignment and if you're living in your abundance when you take that leap to say i want this thing i deserve this thing the universe will make that happen if you take that jump up and I've seen this happen several times with myself. If I want to buy something, I'm like, uh, well, you know what? Catch that uh, thought. No, I want this. I'm going to have it. You know, buy it. And then within 30 seconds later, I'm either getting a booking or a reading or, you know, something's happening to show that the universe balances that out for you. But it is definitely a process to overcome that lack mentality. So some ways that are very common for some people, and I, I still watch my thoughts. Um, here's a good example of one. When you do some online shopping and then it comes to the end and you have to pay shipping, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts about shipping? Because as we all know, shipping prices go up. And here was a little trick, um, a little mind hack, that when I would order something and I would like get a little trippy on the shipping, I said, wait a second. Okay, it's like another $8, $9. Like, Am I, am I focusing on a lack mentality here? Yeah, I think I was. So I changed that. And I start saying now, the wonderful men and women who work hard delivering packages um, deserve fair pay. And this is supporting that. And I feel good about contributing to these people keeping jobs. That's what I've started to tell myself um, about shipping. There's so many things too, like when it first came to the mom guilt, um, I, I got over that real quick. When I started caring about myself, 
um, which is something I had never done before. This was like maybe four years ago and I had already had six kids and I was very intrigued by this business that was selling pampering products and I was like, oh, I love lotion. I love body scrubs. Like I want to be involved with this, you know, and I kind of learned through that um, that I could turn self-care into not just something physical, but a mental health and self-concept and growth spiritually. Um, because once you take that step to start caring about yourself, it really does make things kind of move in a better direction. Um, and you know, I, I have recalled some of this so much, like there's so many, and I feel so sad for so many, um, women who really are like beaten down mentally in this, they don't deserve to have shit, anything mentality. And, you know, when I was, when I would do like trade shows or whatever, I would set up, I would have this, the stock that I had purchased available for sale. And like, I would, I would always have open ones. So, so the people can like smell it and see what it's like. And I just remember seeing this girl who was like heartbroken after her boyfriend or whatever said no to something. Like she, came up to the table, she was like looking at everything, really, really enjoyed herself. Like she, she was liking this product. She's like, oh, I really love this. You know, she's like, I want this. And it was like a matter of $20. And she was like, oh, I want this. Let me go ask my boyfriend. And you know, he was basically just shut her down. He's like, you don't need none of that. What do you, what do you care about your feet? It was a foot scrub. What do you, you don't need that. What do you care about your feet? Like, whoa, like, think about how ingrained you need to be to be told that you don't even deserve, you don't deserve to pamper your feet. Like, how many long lines of like just not allowing pleasure do you come from? First of all, let's think of this female. This is how we do the shadow work. Let's just use this as an example. This female here. So she's obviously attracted to a guy who's basically... Um, keeping her in poverty consciousness, which one would question in her childhood. Was she told no all the time as a kid? When she went to the store, did her parents tell her no, she couldn't have the lollipop? No, she couldn't have the toy? Um, and for a lot of us who get told no as kids, a lot of it, um, you know, that has a pretty deep effect on how we view ourselves, whether or not it was meant like that or not, because when you're three, you don't know what, you know, you're just being told no. So one of the first things that you got to heal in yourself when it comes to this money and abundance flow is you got to look, where are you telling yourself no? Why are you telling yourself no? And where did that stem from? You know, most likely childhood. Most of this subconscious programming does come into play from birth to seven years old. You know, but just think of these people who like their whole life, they have just denied themselves of any kind of um, enjoyment. And it's like, is this really what you consider to be normal? Like... Even to the woman who literally works like 40 some hours a week and then when she gets home, she just doesn't allow herself any time to like 
relax or do anything enjoying and I'm guilty of this. I was a mom for so long and I had it so ingrained into my head that I'm a mom. I have to always do something for all these kids and never think about myself because I'm selfish and I'm horrible if I do that. And that's not even true. That's just an ego program lie. So if you're a mom and you got mom guilt, you got to lose that lady. Lose that shit or else you will lose yourself. Take it from me. I learned the hard way. You know, I spent way too many years in that loop. You know, when you're ready to upgrade your life, the universe goes with you. You got to be open, though. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be open to this flow. I remember doing a money activation, and it was like, you know, it was never really about the money. It was about who is the version of you that has the the unlimited funding. Who's that version of you? And you know, this is the self-concept as it goes with everything. It's a self-concept. Um, who's the version of you who knows that all their needs are being taken care of, all their bills are easily paid and handled, and they have money to spend on personal enjoyment. You know, are you relaxed? Are you carefree? Are you happy? Are you dressing a certain way? Do you have a, you know, do you have a certain whatever, you know? connect to that future or that parallel person and realize that you can simply collapse the time by becoming that person that abundance flows freely to. And this is a bit of a practice too, but once you get it set, like you can set it and forget it. Um, you know, money is my best friend. Money always flows to me. Money is a generous spirit. Um, and really open yourself up to have money flow. Like me, I have like seven different sources of income. And at any time, I can expect that I'm getting paid some type of a way, one way or the other, and I don't have to lock myself into something. And this is what a lot of people who are still in that nine to five mentality really lock them in. Oh, I can't have this. This is all I'll ever get to do. This is all I can ever be. Is a, you know, I got to just go up, go, go to work, you know, no relaxing, you know, and this is it. Eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, and, and not... They're just functioning on this autopilot of eat, sleep, work. And like, you got to break that at some point. Moms, you do this too. It's not the nine to five mentality, but it's that mom guilt where it's like, okay, I got to do this for the kids. I got to do this for the house. And then you, you, you don't stop and consider yourself. And when I first started this healing journey, this self-care journey, I realized taking the time to myself in my bathroom using a foot scrub or you know using a certain lotion it wasn't even about the physical aspect of doing that it was about taking the time to breathe to connect with myself to take the time out and it's about saying hey me too you know because as 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 moms and wives, society has it ingrained that we just don't count for anything. That we are here only to serve. Like, fuck that shit. For real. Fuck that. And some people who have been doing that all their life and then get into this, it's like, oh, well. You know, it sometimes pisses a lot of people off because you're no longer going to be that servant for them. But it's so necessary to get back in tune with yourself and, you know, start saying, hey, 
I'm here too. I deserve to be cared about too. You know? Because you can really just get completely lost and have no sense of purpose and have no enjoyment and really, really spiral. But this is why I'm making this video because you don't have to hit rock bottom before you decide to do something about this. That's why I'm trying to reach as many people as possible um, because I definitely hit a lot of rock bottoms. And it's almost like when you let your gas tank get on empty before you fill it up, this is how you have to treat yourself. So I don't like to let myself get as an empty gas tank before I do something. I now integrate self-care as a normal and regular part of my day, of my life, every fucking day or every other. You know what I mean? Some days are more than others, obviously. <laughs> Next thing I need to do is my nails. That's going to be some self-care. But you know what I'm saying? Like, don't wait until your gas tank runs out and you're stranded on the side of the road. Stop off and get half a tank and then continue on your way, you know? Um, other stuff is going to have to wait sometimes and I know that can be a tough choice but something that really stuck with me um, was when I followed that challenge that Teal Swan had um, because I didn't know what self-love was I've never been loved how could I love myself I don't even know what that is and so I came across Teal Swan and I started watching her teachings and she had put this challenge out there that for one year, if you know, if you're trying to learn self-love, write it down. So I wrote this on my mirror. What would someone who loves themselves do? And do that. And you can ask yourself this question several times throughout the day. You know, um, and, and this can be something as simple as, wow, there's dirty dishes in the sink, but you're really tired and you really want to take a bubble bath. What would somebody who loves themselves do? They would probably go take care of themselves and have that bubble bath. And being able to lose the guilt over that is basically the key to this new mindset like I used to I used to be like oh my god oh this is how things need to be done but why who told you that do you have issues from childhood where maybe you used to get screamed at beaten you know you don't know what if there was a dish and left in the sink overnight where does your programming come from this is all part of the shadow work and deep diving into yourself. Where do these lack programs actually come from? And yes, yeah, some of it you don't know where it comes from because it's coming from TV, it's coming from movies, it's coming from random stuff. But a lot of it can be dove into and dismantled. So now it's like more often than not, there's dirty dishes in my sink. I don't care. If I have some time to do them, I wash some. When I want to stop, I stop. I don't flip out if there's dirty dishes in the sink. That's part of life. Who cares? I got other stuff to do, you know? Um, and I've lost that mom guilt all the way because now I truly and fully believe that when I have my needs met, I'm a much better mom. I am way more patient. And it doesn't mean... Being a good mom doesn't mean burning yourself out to the point of exhaustion and insanity. You can be a good mom and still take some breaks and relax and rewind and do something you enjoy as a human being, not just a servant. So this is the, this is the stuff I'm really, you know, here to help women with, especially if you're a mom. Like I said, I mean, that mom guilt that can 
eat you alive. I mean, think about it. Have you ever just like spent like $10 on something dumb at Walgreens and, and, and just eating yourself alive over, oh my God, I shouldn't have bought something for myself. Ugh, like what if I need that money or this is this is lack mentality that keeps you in lack that's what I'm like this perpetual worrying stressing and yes when you're there it's so real it's so real when you're there because you're creating it to be real right but when you finally get out of that you're like, God, that's insane. Like, why, why did I do that to myself? And of course, it's probably nothing that you wanted to be stuck in. You just didn't know any different. You didn't know your way out, right? But little steps that you can take to get your way out are okay. You want to start small? get yourself something for like a dollar. You know what I mean? Like if you're one of those people that are so guilt ridden that you literally can't do anything nice for yourself, start by like indulging in, in, a, in a drink or something. If you like only let yourself have tap water, like start by buying yourself a, a nice drink or whatever. And you know, letting things escalate from there. But you know, I mostly talk a lot about SPs, but, you know, the money mindset, like, this was, this was pretty much an easier concept for me, especially when you open up to new avenues. And that's just something I really have to say is so important. Open yourself up to these multiple avenues of money coming multiple directions. Do you have a PayPal? Do you have a Cash App? Do you have like, you know, this, that, and the other? I am in three different direct sales companies that I can get sales on websites at any given time. Not only that, I do tarot reading, energy healing, life coaching. I do makeup. I do hair. Like, what do you need? I got it. And, and also on top of that, um, I would accept donations as well. PayPal, twinflametaurus at gmail.com, you know? Any way the money needs to come on, it can come on. Shit, I find money laying around on the street. I find money laying on the sidewalk. I find money on the floor walking in a store, just sitting there and nobody's around. Like, if you're a magnet for money, you're a magnet for money and then we have fun. Um, one little tip, one more little snippet of a tip that I will leave you guys with before I get off the video is when you are sitting down and writing out your bills, and I just did this today, open up your bills and kind of either envision like, ooh, I'm getting a check. Like, let's see how much. Oh, yay, look at this. If you don't want to go that far and pretend your bills are checks, like I always, I always just take that time to affirm, oh, I always have money to pay my bills. It's so easy for me to pay my bills. My bills are always handled. I am so abundant and I don't mind paying my bills. Like I open these up, I said, oh, this is no big deal. These are always covered. My bills are always covered. And just have more of an attitude. I mean, some people, when they open their bills, they are really caught in just a pain feeling. And if that's you, feel into that. What is that in, in your gut that's freaking you out about these bills? It's some kind of a lack program, you know? Now, whether you're going to sit there and feel a bunch of pain and feel horrible about opening your bills or whether you're going to sit there and pretend like everything's fine, that your money is always coming, that you can always handle your bills with no problem, you're still going to pay the bill. So why not have a better attitude about it, right? So 
Practice that stuff. Watch this video a second time if you need to. Let me know what your biggest takeaway from this video was. And if you wanna work closely at really busting into that mom guilt or any other guilt, schedule a session with me. We can focus completely on exactly what you need and we can get this taken care of for you. So, all right, thank you everyone. Bye.